Welcome back to another YouTube video. It's your tutor, Disha. Today, I'll be looking at the CSEC Food, Nutrition and Health 2021 Paper 2 Questions. I must say this is a pretty decent paper. And while I was going through this paper, I was saying, wow, the science students must have had a field day doing this paper. And they actually did. All my science students, they got a grade one in food, nutrition, and health. All right, guys, let's get right into it. The paper initiated by asking the students to define the following terms, which included balanced diet, dietary guidelines and nutritional status a balanced diet is a diet that contains all the nutrients in the correct quantities that will maintain the health and growth of an organism so dietary guidelines are a set of guidelines stipulated by an entity whether it's your ministry your government for making food choices that will help a person or a population live a healthy life and this healthy life you should be thinking would include maintaining an optimum weight and reducing your risk for chronic diseases nutritional status so the nutritional status is the condition of our body as a result of the foods consumed and their use by the body so the second question says, explain two ways in which community nutrition can be used to address the issue of malnutrition. So this is a thinking question. So here we could sensitize the community members through educational or health promotion. Yes, promoting the different food groups and the different nutrients and the correct amount to be taken daily. Along with that, weekly visits of uh, community health professionals to the community, to the homes in the community rather, would reach the population more, addressing the issue of malnutrition. So sensitization and weekly visits and then you expound on these two could secure a good four marks there. There are several ways to go about um tackling the issue of malnutrition but here are my two ways all right c says using a specific example of each explain two dietary guidelines that caribbean persons can use to ensure a healthy lifestyle caribbean people can eat a variety of foods from all the different food groups what are the food groups from um, the staples of food from animals legumes vegetables and fruits and so on caribbean people can also get involved in physical activity they can make physical activity a part of their daily routines for example 30 minutes of exercise per day could suffice this number two list two sources of proteins sources of proteins can come from animal sources or plant sources animal sources to include chicken or fish Plant sources to include nuts or soya beans. And you're only choosing two here. Part two, state two functions of proteins. Proteins are precursors. Yes, this means that they are useful to make components in the body like antibodies, hormones, and enzymes. We also need proteins for the growth and repair of our cells and tissues. Part three, name two elements found in proteins. Well, we know that all of the macromolecules consist of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, but two unique elements found in proteins include nitrogen and sulfur. Part B, Susan is preparing a medley of steamed vegetables to be served for lunch. Explain two ways in which Susan can conserve vitamin C during the pre-preparational stage and the preparational stage of the meal. The pre-preparation before I'm um, preparing the medley of steamed vegetables. So we want to wash the vegetables before cutting as opposed to after cutting so we can retain as much vitamin C as possible. Secondly, we can cut the vegetables if we have to cut them in larger pieces so that we won't destroy the cell wall of the vegetables. So if, we, if you don't have to cut them, 
or if you have to cut them you cut them in larger pieces preparational during steaming and blanching we use a small amount of water and that reduces the amount of vitamin c being lost during the steaming or blanching process you want to keep your lids closed to prevent the evaporation or leaching of the vitamin c you can also talk about timing right the less time you take to cook the the steamed vegetable better you will be at retaining vitamin c in this meal and there are several other ways on how you can conserve vitamin c during pre-preparational and preparational stage these are just how i would go about answering this for four marks Part C, Peter, an elderly man, was advised by his doctor to increase his intake of water and minerals. So just three signs or symptoms that Peter may have shown that caused the doctor to recommend an increase in intake of water. Peter could be showing signs of dehydration, right? Peter could be, Peter could be having headaches and Peter could be constipated. Part two, Peter's doctor recommended that he use a supplement to increase his mineral intake. List three ways in which Peter can increase his mineral intake other than by the use of supplements. Peter can adopt a broad, healthy diet, including animal and plant foods, and that can supply him with a variety of minerals. Secondly, Peter can drink a lot of water, especially fortified water containing dissolved minerals thirdly peter can consume food products that have been fortified with minerals number three here again asking students to define some terms and the first one here is table dot a type of menu that provides a complete meal for a set price next we see main course and the main course is the main meat course that is offered along with a carbohydrate source and a vegetable dish. High tea. And high tea is the meal that is consumed in the evening or, or the late afternoon. Consists of a hot dish, bread, meat, in some instances, tea. All right, part B. Explain one benefit of each of the following nutrients in the diet of an athlete. Protein. An athlete would need protein to help to build and strengthen his muscle mass to repair those worn out tissues. He would need carbohydrates for a constant supply of energy, right? We know that carbohydrate provides the main precursor for, for respiration, which releases energy, which is glucose. An athlete would need the minerals to, to maintain an electrolytic balance in the body. And some minerals are cofactors, which, which takes place in the chemical reactions in the body. C. Discuss the importance of vitamin B12 in the diet of a vegan. We know that a vegan is a person that does not consume food from animals. And we know that vitamin B12 is its main source is from food from animals animals a vegan needs vitamin b12 because it's important in our body important for the manufacture of red blood cells nerve function for processes like synthesizing new dna and rna so if a vegan does not supplement the vitamin b12 in their diet they will be prone to diseases associated with these functions like anemia and nervous tissue damage number four list four factors that contribute to food spoilage warm temperature moisture improper storage poor food handling and for two marks we're asked here to define food borne illness so food borne illness is a type of illness that occurs in individuals who consume or ingest contaminated food and c Explain how mold contaminates food. What is mold? Mold is a fungus, right? A fungus that live on plants and animal matter. For example, bread that is left open in your kitchen. They contaminate food during their mode of feeding. We call this mode saprophytic nutrition. 
from a science student, you must know this. When they are feeding on their host, they release myotoxin. And the myotoxin can cause adverse effects if introduced in our body, ultimately leading to a foodborne illness. D, explain the importance of any three steps to be followed when preparing green beans for freezing. All right, so here are my answers. I would wash the green beans thoroughly. As a matter of fact, I would wash my hands first to maintain good hygiene. Then I'll wash the vegetables to remove any dirt, bacteria, or pesticide residues. I'll treat my green beans via blanching. Blanching is another process that helps to remove the microorganisms. And blanching also prevents the foods from losing their flavor. Then I would focus on container selection before freezing. But even before that, you want to ensure that you allow the food to cool down, right? Because if you put it in the fridge hot, then that again will pose another risk of food spoilage. But I'll talk about container selection, ensuring that I use a clean freezer safe container that is airtight and won't expose the vegetable and make them lose their quality. Number five, define the term first aid. First here, I would say it's immediate. So it's the immediate treatment, or if you want to use back first, the first treatment given to a patient after an accident before professional help is administered. There, B says you should outline the method of first aid treatment for each of the following injuries. Both, they're allocating two marks for burns and heavy bleeding. So for burns, you want to firstly remove the source of the source of heat. You remove the burning source. Number two, you cool the burning. Most commonly done by placing the area that is affected by burning on the cold running water. Number three, you want to remove anything around the affected area like jewelry or clothing, right? And then number four, you cover with a bandage and number five, you seek professional help. So consider your arrangement of the steps here. You might have placed some steps before the other, but in any case, you would have still gotten it correct. For heavy bleeding, the first thing you do is apply pressure. Then you elevate or you elevate or apply pressure. Then you bandage, treat, and seek medical attention. We discussed three ways in which energy can be conserved when using the refrigerator. So here now, discuss. We have to expound. So the first thing you want to do is to keep your refrigerator closed. Because if we constantly open our refrigerator, then it's going to let all that cool air out and warm air in. The refrigerator has to use a lot of energy to make the environment cool again. Here, you want to place only cool food in the refrigerator. So after you're cooking your food, you want to bring it down to room temperature as much as possible before putting it in the refrigerator so that the refrigerator won't spend so much energy in cooling the food or cooling the, the environment. Number three, you ensure that your refrigerator infrastructures are intact. For example, ensuring the seal is intact. And the seal is a very important component in the refrigerator that helps it to insulate the air inside the fridge. All right, D, it says the following diagram shows two types of kitchen layout, A and B. The Brown family is large. Mrs. Brown bakes on weekends and holidays to earn extra income and from time to time, several members of the family assist her in the kitchen. Which of the two kitchen layouts, A or B, is most suitable for the Brown family? Explain your answer. My answer would have been A. Why? A has more cabinets for storage. 
right? Remember her family assist her in the kitchen, right? So I would say that the kitchen would be more organized so that the family members will find the products more easier. And another reason is that it has more space, right? Having more space would mean that there would be a lesser instance for injury in that the family members won't bounce into each other or turn over stuff because they're at different uh, distances from each other as opposed to B, it's a pretty smaller kitchen. Number six, definitions again. Define each of the following terms, enriched versus fortification. So when we say a food is enriched, it means that micronutrients have been added back to this food after processing to kind of improve the quality of the food. And when we say a food is fortified, it means that micronutrients have been added, new micronutrients that weren't there prior to processing. And then B, you need to state one example of an enriched food and one example of a fortified food. Enriched bread is an example. Um, and adding micronutrients to orange juice that weren't there. All right, C, state two advantages of using the universal product code in supermarkets. So using the universal product code in supermarkets helps for product identification via barcode scanning. It also helps in the inventory and the itemization of products. D, the following diagram shows show two labels, one for product A and one for product B. So let's look at the labels there. Which of the two products A or B would be most suitable for use by a diabetic? Now, who is a diabetic again? So that is someone who in colloquial term will say have sugar, right? With this disease, there's a deterioration in the pancreas, right? So, so the body is not producing the hormone to lower the blood sugar. Looking at these two labels, I would go for B, Y. Because I'm focusing on the carbohydrates here. Dietary fiber which is more, which is good, but a total sugar is less here. So I would go for B here, focusing on the sugar content. And part three says, identify a group of persons for which product A would be suitable. For iron, there's more iron in product A, 45% as opposed to 6%. So I would say A is suitable for an anemic person and then e is the last question says complete the table by naming one food in which the spice or herbs listed are likely to be used ginger you can use ginger for marinades cloves cloves can be used in bar in the barbecue process of barbecue chicken or pork cinnamon is used in pastry for example breads or muffins and thyme is primarily used in the flavoring process whether it's flavoring poultry or casseroles thanks for watching this video guys remember to like share and subscribe peace out